welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate, and today I will be talking about the frankly insane October TBR that I have made for myself this month. Before I get into the books that I'm planning on reading, just kind of a few life updates. The first of that is that part of the reason this TBR is as crazy as it is, is because I am going back to school for a couple months at the end of October. So my free time is going to be very limited in November, December, and January, um, which of course means that I'm going to try and cram as much reading as possible into October before I have to kind of buckle down and focus on schoolwork. Part of my TBR is really more of an MBR, meaning might be read. I have a bunch of spooky books and uh, things that I'd like to get to, but I'm not sure that I'll have the time for, and I shifted them into an MBR category so that I can focus on the ones I definitely need to get read this month and hopefully get to those. I had a pretty terrible reading month in September. It was the least number of books I have read all year and part of that is because I got super obsessed playing a video game which I'll talk about when I do my September wrap-up. Um, but it's the reason that I have a large section of carryover reads for this TBR, which is the first category that I'm going to talk about. The first one that I'll mention as a carryover is actually a multi-month carryover, and that is The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. I started this at the end of August. I've been listening to the audiobook for it, which has been nice, but I think I might switch to an immersion read just because some of the terms are harder to catch just via audiobook. It's also pretty slow paced and I've kind of been struggling with that because I'm really not a big fan of slow paced fantasy. Lord of the Rings has kind of been the exception there just because of the character arcs, so I'm going to give Eye of the World some time and hope that it will change my opinion the way Lord of the Rings did by the time it got to Two Towers but I'm about 41% in. Hopefully by the end of this month I will have finished this. I am definitely not reading past the first one this year, but I might make, if I end up changing my mind on Eye of the World uh, this month, then I will likely make Wheel of Time more of a priority next year. The second carryover book that I will talk about is Arm and the Sphinx by Josiah Bancroft. This is the second book in the Books of Babel series. I really enjoyed the first one, Senlin Ascends, and meant to get to Arm of the Sphinx last month so that I could continue on to Hob King this month. Did not happen, so my focus at the beginning of this month is to get to Arm of the Sphinx, and if I get to Hob King, great. If I don't, I'm not going to stress over it. I don't have any strict time limit here. Um, but I would definitely like to get to that, especially because I know there's more pirate airship element in that one, and I am stoked about that. The third carryover book that I'm going to talk about is New World Begins by Jeremy D. Popkin. This was my pick for a nonfiction book last month. I only made it about a quarter of the way in because I just didn't set aside time for it. I really like it. It's very, it's about the French Revolution and it's very uh, comprehensive and uh, I love the way the author is very even-handed with all of the different figures that are involved so I want to use that as my nonfiction pick for this month and hopefully finish it this month. I have a Book Riot recommendation book that I didn't get to last month that I would like to get to this month. I actually have two of them this month, one for last month and one for this month. I'm hopeful that I will get to that. Uh, the first one is Hench by Natalie Zena Walshots, and maybe I pronounced that right, I'm not sure, which is kind of like a villain's henchman doing an expose on superheroes after she ends up getting hurt by one of them. It's supposed to be kind of snarky. It looks like it could be really fun because I'm a fan of superhero stories. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting to that one. And then if I get a chance, I will add on the other Book Riot recommendation book, which is uh, Nice Dragons Finish Last, which is kind of an urban fantasy involving dragons. I love dragons, so that was that feels like a win-win, and it's quite short. So hopefully I can get to that. That one's by Rachel Aaron, I believe. Um, so 
hopefully I'll get to those this month. Last carryover I have is Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. Um, military sci-fi as far as I understand it that's kind of known for being more complicated and dropping you into the middle of things. If you're curious about it definitely check out the review that Angela over at the Literature Science Alliance did. Uh, she's the one that really got me interested in this and then it was picked as a book club pick for last month. Uh, I'm running behind because uh, of reading the stand for that book club as kind of like an extra pick. So I haven't gotten to uh, several of the ones that I needed to get to, but um, I'm really interested in getting to this one, hopefully at the beginning of this month, because we'll be doing the discussion for it relatively soon. The only other priority book that I have for this month is actually a last minute buddy read and that is Gideon the Ninth by um, excuse me, Tamsin Weir and I'd heard a ton about this, it's been on my bookshelf for years at this point uh, but I've just never gotten around to it and I am buddy reading this. We are reading a couple chapters a day for that so just making slow progress in the first half of this month. Uh, it's nice to have that push into finally reading it because I'm a couple chapters in and I love this book already. It's got very 40k but super snarky vibes with necromancers in space kind of trying to fight their way into favored positions for this emperor who rules over the galaxy. And it's, I, I'm in love with it. I think if the humor doesn't click for you, you may not enjoy um, Gideon, but uh, I am, it's absolutely one of my favorites so far. So uh, I'll definitely talk more about it later, but it's, it's, it's a winner so far for me. Um, now, getting to the books that I might read in the month of October. Many of these are spooky books that I would like to get to, but again, uh, I'm cramming a ton of books in here, so who knows what's going to happen. The first one on that list is actually probably top of the list of my MBR as far as getting to them, and that is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. He is most well known for his book Perks of Being a Wallflower, which I've actually never read, um, but I am curious to see how he does shifting from more of that contemporary to a horror book. The story focuses on a mom and her son, the son goes missing in the woods after they've moved to this new town and then comes back, but uh, now he's got an imaginary friend who's telling him that he needs to do something very specific in order to avoid a bad fate for his mom and the people in the town. It sounds interesting. I've heard mixed reviews, but I'm very curious to get to this one, particularly because it's a buddy read for two separate groups, uh, which conveniently worked out for me. Um, the next book on my MPR is uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. This is an incredibly chunky book, so I am grateful to the people uh, reading it over in the Shelf Space Discord that they split it up into three months instead of trying to tackle this, I think it's like a thousand pages, um, in one month, which was not going to be possible for me. So. Uh, definitely looking forward to getting to that. As far as I understand it, it's two magicians um, right around the Napoleonic era uh, and two British magicians around the Napoleonic era. So I'm very curious to get into that and see if I jive with Clark's writing style, which I some people really love and some people not so much. So we'll see how it works out for me. Then I have one of the creepiest books I think I've ever owned as far as looks go, and that is my annotated collection of Lovecraft stories, and um, I've already started on this. My goal for this collection, I'm putting it down, it's way too happy to hold up. Um, my goal for that collection is to read two stories every day, which so far I'm keeping up with. There are some longer stories in there that are um, I'll probably just read one a day when I get to those, like Call of Cthulhu in the case of I think it's Charles Dexter Ward because there's no way I'm fitting two stories in but the thing that's really nice about that collection is it has a lot of annotations and some pictures of 
um, various things that Lovecraft references and kind of defines some of the weirder terms that he uses. So it's already pretty interesting and helpful to have that. This Lovecraft can be kind of a dense read sometimes and definitely a slow read sometimes. So uh, I'm really enjoying finally digging into that with more references this time. Next on the spooky MBR is Salem's Lot by Stephen King. This is kind of his classic vampire story. I've heard it's got kind of a slow pace at the beginning and then kind of ratchets up. So I am definitely looking forward to this if I can make time for it. I really like Stephen King and October is the right month to be reading his stories. Um, I guess I should say I like some of Stephen King's stories rather than all of them because I hated The Stand. But, um, but anyway, I'm looking forward to more Stephen King in the spooky season. Also have The October Country by Ray Bradbury, which I think is a collection of stories. I'll correct it if I'm not uh, right about that. But uh, I've never read any Ray Bradbury, but this got suggested as a buddy read over in the Shelf Space Discord, and it sounds like it would be a lot of fun. So I definitely want to get to this if I get a chance. I also have another book which I had uh, had as basically an MBR in September but didn't get around to, and that is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. I loved another book I read earlier this year by him, The Only Good Indians. And while I'm not a huge fan of slashers, uh, I'm very curious to see what he does with them. Because the main character in uh, My Heart is a Chainsaw is a young woman who's kind of struggling with uh, not really fitting in in her hometown and dealing with a lot of crap like um, bad parents and bullying and stuff like that but loves slashers, and then um, my understanding of the slasher basically comes to town. So I, I am very curious to see how Jones handles that. Then I have a book which I'm actually already started. I'm about a third of the way into it, and that is Blackwing by Ed McDonald. I picked this up solely because I saw Alan uh, Alan's review of it, which I will link in the cards. Um, if you want more details on it, it feels uh, kind of like a mix of weird western plus a little bit of steampunk plus a little bit of like detective noir. Very gritty and very centered on anti-heroes, but I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm obviously already reading that one, even though I have priorities I haven't gotten to yet. Couldn't resist Blackwing, so... Um, definitely reading that one this month. Uh, the last two I'm going to talk about uh, one of them is The Two Towers by uh, Tolkien. I am doing participating in the read-along that Ryan from Seeking Stories and Klaus from the Contradictorian have been doing. Um, they started last month and have been will be continuing through the books in The Lord of the Rings. I It was very convenient timing for me because September is when the audiobooks narrated by Andy Serkis came out. I have been reading Fellowship. I'm not quite done with it, but I'm expecting to be done in the next week or so, and I love his narration style for these. I really enjoyed his narration for The Hobbit, and he's just as much fun in Fellowship. He unfortunately has not made me love Tom Bombadil, who I continue being a hater of, um, but everything else is amazing. So I'm really looking forward to getting to Two Towers, since that was one of my favorite parts I'm just such a sucker for the Rohirrim, um, so I'm really looking forward to having Circus's narration of those sections. The last one I'm going to talk about is Jade City by Fonda Lee. This is another buddy read that I would like to get to. It is a lower priority for me because it's A, not in one of my priority lists, it's also B, not a spooky book, but it's kind of an Asian-inspired mafia story that sounds really fun. I just hadn't Previously, hadn't really been in the mood for Mafia stories, so I'm hoping to get to this one. I'm kind of being especially driven right now because there's a local convention, and um, assuming things don't go sideways, Fonda Lee is planning on being at that convention, so I'd like to get through at least Jade City before the end of the month when that happens. Um, but we'll just see how it goes. If not, I can still go see her talk, and it'll still be fun. So, not super worried about it. But that is my frankly insane 
October TBR. Uh, let me know what you're reading this month and if you've read any of the books that I've talked about here. Uh, I hope you guys have a good one and a brilliant reading month. See you next time! Thank you.